Good morning, folks. Pastor Jim Thomas from the Village Chapel with today's daily devotion. This time reading from a year with C.S. Lewis. Daily readings from his classic works. This is uh, perhaps his best known book, Mere Christianity, that began as a series of broadcast talks. And uh, I'm going to read one called A Gentle Welcome here. It's really about the church and about uh, our participation and role and how we see the church. I think this is important for us, especially in this time of isolation and uh, as, you're, as you're, you're feeling disconnected and perhaps even disoriented, uh, as, uh, as I do sometimes. Uh, I'm used to, very much used to seeing people and being with people, and especially on Sunday. So it's strange to look at the tiny little dot on this phone and, and uh, assume that you're out there listening. <laughs> but um, here he says, I hope no reader will suppose that mere Christianity is here put forward as an alternative to the creeds of the existing communions. See, he recognizes the variety of uh, in the church, the, the diversity, I guess I should say, in the church and that the uh, different creeds, uh, which articulate the beliefs and summarize the beliefs of the church, uh, uh, may come down on different sides on some secondary issues, and he leaves plenty of room for that. He wants to talk about mere Christianity, though, that part that we have in common. He says it's more like a hall out of which doors open into several rooms. If I can bring anyone into that hall, I shall have done what I attempted. But it is in the rooms, not in the hall, that there are fires and chairs and meals. The hall is a place to wait in, a place from which to try the various doors, not a place to live in. For that purpose, the worst of the rooms, whichever that may be, is, I think, preferable. It is true that some people may find they have to wait in the hall for a considerable time while others feel certain almost at once which door they must knock at. I do not know why there is this difference, but I am sure God keeps no one waiting unless he sees that it is good for him to wait. Wow. When you do get into your room, you will find that the long wait has done you some kind of good which you would not have, uh, ha would not have had otherwise. But you must regard it as waiting, not as camping. I like that. It's a great distinction, isn't it? Uh, not meant to dig roots down there, not meant to, to settle in, uh, but to be waiting to be moved into a room. I like that. That's great. You must keep on praying for light. And of course, even in the hall, you must begin trying to obey the rules which are common to the whole house. And above all, you must be asking which door is the true one, not which pleases you best by its paint and paneling. In plain language, the question should never be, do I like that kind of service? But are these doctrines true? Is holiness here? Does my conscience move me toward this? Is my reluctance to knock at this door due to my pride or my mere taste? or my personal dislike of this particular doorkeeper. <laughs> this is amazing, isn't it? When you have reached your own room, be kind to those who have chosen different doors and to those who are still in the hall. If they are wrong, they need your prayers all the more. And if they are your enemies, then you are under orders to pray for them. That is one of the rules common to the whole house. Oh, I love that. This is from Mere Christianity. That's the preface, actually, to the book. It reminds me of that part of the Apostles' Creed where we say we believe in the Holy Catholic Church. Holy does not mean that any uh, one of the churches or any one of us are perfect at all. Uh, it does mean that if we're two true Christians, though, we are being perfected in Christ. Um, so you've heard that old adage, if you find a perfect church, don't join it because you'll ruin it. And that's still true for all of us, myself included. But actually being in Christ, it does include the idea of being a part of his church and belonging to his church. Uh, when I belong to Jesus, you see, I belong to everyone else who belongs to Jesus. And so do you. And the great comfort and assurance that brings us 
is that when we belong to Jesus, when we belong to Jesus' church, we're never alone ever again for all of eternity. And that's a really, really good bit of news in days when we have to isolate a little bit and where we have to sort of be disconnected from each other physically. In church, we are reminded of the things that matter. We're held accountable to each other. We have opportunities to worship God together and to learn to love one another well. I pray that that would be the case for us, whether we're the, the church connected by the internet, the church in the building together or not. Um, see yourself today as part of something bigger than just yourself. See yourself belonging to him first and foremost, and then see yourself belonging to his church, his body, um, and all of the family of faith, uh, some of which might, you might find annoying from time to time, but all of whom belong to him, all of whom belong to him by grace, just as you do and just as I do. Uh, let's pray. Lord, thank you for this perspective on um, the society of persons uh, that we call the church. And thank you for this perspective on our own sense of connectedness, not only to you, but to your church as well. Um, help us, Lord, like uh, Lewis said, uh, not just to make it about the, the, the preferences or the um, what, what appeals to us, Lord, but where we can find ways to grow in holiness with one another, where we can find ways to be encouraged uh, in the grace uh, and the good news of the gospel. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.